the Queen's Hotel, Ennis, County Clare, where Rudolph Bloom, Rudolph Beard, died on the evening of the 27th of June 1886, at some hour unstated, in consequence of an overdose of monk shoe or canite, self-administered in the form of an aerobic liniment composed of two parts of the canite liniment to add chloroform liniment, purchased by him at 10.20 a.m. on the morning of the 27th of June 1886 at the Medical Hall at Francis Denehy, 17 Church Street, Ennis, after having, though not in consequence of having, purchased at 3.15 p.m. on the afternoon of the 27th of June 1886 a new boulder straw hat, extra smart, after having, though not in consequence of having, purchased at the hour and in the place aforesaid, the toxin aforesaid, at the General Draper store of James Cullen, 4 Main Street, Ennis. Did he attribute this homonymity to information or coincidence or intuition? Coincidence. Did he depict the scene verbally for his guest to see? He preferred himself to see another's face and listen to another's words by which potential narration was realized and kinetic temperament relieved. Did he see only a second coincidence in the second scene narrated to him, described by the narrators of Pesgossite of Palestine or the parable of the Palums? If, with the preceding scene and with others unnarrated but existent by implication, to which add essays on various subjects or moral apothegms, e. g. My favorite hero of procrastination is the thief of time, composed during Chalier's, seemed to him to contain in itself and in conjunction with the personal equation certain possibilities of financial, social, personal and sexual success, whether specially collected and selected as model pedagogic themes of cent percent merit for the use of preparatory and junior grade students or contributed in printed form, following the precedent of Philip B. Offoy or Dr. Dicker. Blum studies in blue, to a publication of certified circulation and solvency are employed verbally as intellectual stimulation for sympathetic auditors, tacitly appreciative of successful narrative and confidently augurative of successful achievement, during the increasingly longer nights gradually following the summer solstice on the day but three following, Vitalista, Tuesday the 21st of June, S. Aloysius Gonzaga. Sunrise 3.33 a.m. Com sunset 8.29 p.m. Which domestic problem as much as, if not more than, any other frequently engaged his mind. What to do with our wives? What had been his hypothetical singular solutions? Parlor games, dominoes, halma, tiddlywinks, spillikens, cup and ball, nap, spoil five, bezik, twenty-five, beggar my neighbor, giraffes, chess or backgammon. Embroidery, darning or knitting for the pole chanted clothing society, musical duets, mandolin and guitar, piano and flute, guitar and piano, legal scrivenery or envelope addressing, bi weekly visits to variety entertainments, commercial activity is pleasantly commanding and pleasingly obeyed mistress proprietors in a cool dairy shop or warm cigar divan, the clandestine satisfaction and erotic irritation in masculine brothels, state inspected and medically controlled. Social visits, at regular and frequent prevented intervals and with regular frequent preventive superintendents, to and from female acquaintances of recognized respectability in the vicinity. Courses of evening instruction specially designed to render liberal instruction agreeable. What instances of deficient mental development in his wife inclined him in favor of the last mentioned nine solution? In disoccupied moments she had more than once covered the sheet of paper with signs and hieroglyphics which she stated were Greek and Irish and Hebrew characters. She had interrogated constantly at varying intervals as to the correct method of writing the capital initial of the name of a city in Canada, Quebec. She understood little of political complications, internal, or balance of power, external. In calculating the data of bills she frequently had recourse to digital aids. After completion of laconic epistolary compositions she abandoned the implement of calligraphy and the encaustic pigment, exposed to the corrosive action of clippers, green vitriol and nutgill. Unusual polysyllables of foreign origin she interpreted phonetically or by false analogy or by both, metempsychosis, metempychosis, alias, the mendacious person mentioned in sacred scripture. What compensated in the false balance of her intelligence for these and such deficiencies of judgment regarding persons, places and things? The false apparent parallelism of all perpendicular arms of all balances, 
to prove true by construction. The counterbalance of her proficiency of judgment regarding one person proved true by experiment. How had he attempted to remedy the state of comparative ignorance? Variously, by leaving in a conspicuous place a certain book open at a certain page, by assuming in her, when alluding explanatorily, latent knowledge, by open ridicule in her presence of some absent other's ignorant lives. With what success had he attempted direct instruction? She followed not all, a part of the whole, gave attention with interest comprehended with surprise, with care repeated, with greater difficulty remembered, forgot these, with misgiving re-remembered, or repeated the there. What system had proved more effective? Indirect suggestion implicating self-interest. Example. She disliked umbrella with brain, he liked woman with umbrella. She disliked new hat with brain, he liked woman with new hat, he bought new hat with brain, she carried umbrella with new hat. Accepting the analogy implied in his guest's parable which examples of post his eminence did he abduce? Three seekers of the pure truth, Moses of Egypt, Moses Maimonides, author of Mornabakim, guide of the perplexed, and Moses Mendelssohn of such eminence that from Moses of Egypt to Moses Mendelssohn there arose none like Moses Maimonides. What statement was made, under correction, by a balloon concerning a fourth seeker of pure truth, by name Aristotle, mentioned, with permission, by Stephen? That the seeker mentioned had been a pupil or rabbinical philosopher, name uncertain? Were other unapocryphal illustrious sons of the lawn children of a selected or rejected race mentioned? Felix Barthol Nielsen, composer, Baruch Spinoza, philosopher, Mendoza, populist. Ferdinand Lossel, reformer, dualist. What fragments of verse from the ancient Hebrew and ancient Irish languages were cited with modulations of voice and translation of text by guest to host and by a host to guest? By Stephen, Sol, Sol, Solarun, Solgosio, Caragas, Solgoku, and Walk, Walk, Walk Your Way, Walk in Safety, Walk with Care. By Bloom, Kaithlock. Terim and Rakate age and Bach Els Amatech, that temple on midnight hair is as a slice of pomegranate. How is a glyphic comparison of the phonic symbols of both languages made in substantiation of the oral comparison? By juxtaposition. On the penultimate blank page of a book of inferior literary style, entitled Sweets of Sin, produced by Bloom and so manipulated that its front cover came in contact with the surface of the table with a pencil supplied by Stephen. Stephen wrote the Irish characters for G, A, D, M, simple and modified, and Bloom in turn wrote the Hebrew characters Gimel, Olive, Dolethin, in the absence of M, a substituted cough, explaining their arithmetical values as ordinal and cardinal numbers, Vitalasa 3, 1, 4, and 100. Was the knowledge possessed by both of each of these languages, the extinct and the revived, theoretical or practical? Theoretical, being confined to certain grammatical rules of accidents and syntax and practically excluding vocabulary. What points of contact existed between these languages and between the peoples who spoke them? The presence of guttural sounds, diacritic aspirations, empathetic and servile letters in both languages, their antiquity both having been taught on the plain of Shinra 242 years after the deluge in the seminary instituted by Phineas Farsai, descendant of Noah, progenitor of Israel, and descendant of Hebron Herman, progenitors of Ireland, their archaeological, genealogical, hagiographical, exegetical, homiletic, deponomastic, historical and religious literatures comprising the works of rabbis and cultists, Torah, Talmud, Mishnah and Gemara, Master, Pentateuch, Book of the Dun Cow, Book of Bullermoa, Garland of Hoth, Book of Kales, Their Dispersal, Persecution, Survival and Revival, The Isolation of Their Synagogical and Ecclesiastical Rites in Ghetto, S. Mary's Abbey and Mass Shouse, Adam and Eve's Tavern, The Proscription of Their National Costumes and Penal Laws and Jewish Dress Acts, The Restoration and Chant of David of Zion and the Possibility of Irish Political Autonomy and Devolution. What anthem did Bloom chant partially in anticipation of that multiple, ethnically irreducible consummation? Kalad Baluanam Nefesh, Jehudi, Homija. Why was the chant arrested at the conclusion of this first distich? In consequence of defective mnemotechnic. 
how did the chanter compensate for this deficiency? By a prephrastic version of the general text. In what common study did their mutual reflections merge? The increasing simplification traceable from the Egyptian epigraphic hieroglyphs to the Greek and Roman alphabets and the anticipation of modern stenography and telegraphic code and the cuneiform inscriptions, Semitic, and the regular quinquicostate aug him writing, Celtic. Did the guest comply with his host's request? Doubly, by appending his signature in Irish and Roman characters. What was Stephen's auditive sensation? He heard in a profound ancient male unfamiliar melody the accumulation of the past. What was Bloom's visual sensation? He saw in a quick young male familiar form the predestination of a future. What were Stephen's and Bloom's quasar simultaneous volitional quasar sensations of concealed identities? Visually, Stephen's, the traditional figure of hypostasis, depicted by Johannes de Mycenaeus, Lentulus Romanus and Epiphanius Monicus is leucodermic, sesquiped alien with wild dark hair. Auditively, blooms, the traditional accent of the ecstasy of catastrophe. What future careers had been possible for Bloom in the past and with what exemplars? In the church, Roman, Anglican or nonconformist, exemplars, the very Reverend John Conme S.J., the Reverend T. Salmon, D.D., Provost of Trinity College, Dr. Alexander J. Dowie, at the bar, English or Irish, exemplars, Seymour Bush, Casey, Rufus Isaacs, Casey on the stage modern or Shakespearean, exemplars, Charles Wyndham, high comedian Osmond Turrell, died 1901, exponent of Shakespeare. Did the host encourage his guests to chant in the modulated voice a strange legend on an allied theme? Reassuringly, their place, where none could hear them talk, being secluded, reassured, the decocted beverages, Allowing for some solid residual sediment of a mechanical mixture, water plus sugar plus cream plus cocoa, having been consumed. Recite the first major part of this chanted legend. Little Harry Hughes and his schoolfellows all went out for to play ball. In the very first ball Little Harry Hughes played he drove it over the jizz garden wall. In the very second ball Little Harry Hughes played he broke the jizz windows all. How did the son of Rudolph receive this first part? With unmixed feeling. Smiling, a Jew he heard with pleasure and saw the unbroken kitchen window. Recite the second part, minor, of the legend. Then out there came the Jew's daughter and she all dressed in green. Come back, come back, you pretty little boy, and play your ball again. I can't come back and I won't come back without my school fellows all. For if my master he did hear he'd make it a sorry ball. She took him by the lily white hand and led him along the hall until she led him to a room where none could hear him call. She took a pink knife out of her pocket and cut off his little head. And now he'll play his ball no more for he lies among the dead. How did the father of Millicent receive the second part? With mixed feelings. And smiling, he heard and saw with wonder his daughter, all dressed in green. Condense Stephen's commentary. One of all, the least of all, is the victim predestined. Once by inadvertence, twice by design, he challenges his destiny. It comes when he is abandoned and challenges him reluctant and, as an apparition of hope and youth, holds him unresisting. It leads him to a strange habitation, to a secret and fatal apartment, and there, implacable, immolates him, consenting. Why was the host, victim predestined, sad? He wished that a tale of a deed should be told of a deed not by him should by him not be told. Why was the host, reluctant, unresisting, still? In accordance with the law of the conservation of energy. Why was the host, secret and fidel, silent? He weighed the possible evidences for and against ritual murder, the incitations of the hierarchy, the superstition of the populace, the propagation of rumor and continued fraction of illiteracy, the envy of opulence, the influence of retaliation, the sporadic reappearance of atavistic delinquency, the mitigating circumstances of fanaticism, hypnotic suggestion and somnambulism. From which, if any, of these mental or physical disorders was he not totally immune? From hypnotic suggestion, once, waking, he had not recognized his sleeping apartment, more than once, waking, he had been for an indefinite time incapable of moving or uttering sounds. 
from somnambulism. Once, sleeping, his body had risen, crouched and crawled in the direction of a heatless fire and, having attained its destination, there, curled, unheated, in night attire had lain, sleeping. Had this latter or any cognac phenomenon declared itself in any member of his family? Twice, in Hull Street and in Ontario Terrace, his daughter Millicent, Millie, at the ages of six and eight years had uttered in sleep an exclamation of terror and had replied to the interrogations of two figures in night attire with a vacant mute expression. What other infantile memories had he of her? The 15th of June, 1889 a querulous newborn female infant crying to cause in lesson congestion. A child renamed Padney Socks she shook with shocks her money box, counted his three free money penny buttons, one, two, three, a doll, a boy, a sailor she cast away, blonde, born of too dark, she had blonde ancestry, remote, for violation, her hauptman hey no, Austrian army, proximate, a hallucination, Lieutenant Mauve, British Navy. What endemic characteristics were present? Conversely, the nasal infernal formation was derived in a direct line of lineage which, though interrupted, would continue with distant intervals to more distant intervals to its most distant intervals. What memories had he of her adolescence? She relegated her hoop and its skip and rope to a recess. On the Duke's lawn, entreated by an English visitor, she declined to permit him to make and take away her photographic image, objection not stated. On the South Circular Road in the company of Ilsa Potter, followed by an individual of sinister aspect, she went halfway down Stamer Street and turned abruptly back, reason of change not stated. On the vigil of the 15th anniversary of her birth she wrote a letter from Mullinger, County Westmeath, making a brief allusion to a local student, faculty and year not stated. Did the first division, pretending a second division, afflict him? Less than he had imagined more than he had hoped. What second departure was contemporaneously perceived by him similarly, if differently? The temporary departure of his cat. Why similarly, why differently? Similarly, because actuated by a secret purpose the quest of a new male Mullinger student or of a healing herb valerian. Differently, because of different possible returns to the inhabitants or to the habitation. In other respects were their differences similar? In passivity, in economy, in the instinct of tradition, and unexpectedness. As, inasmuch as leaning, she sustained her blonde hair for him to ribbon it for her, see of McCartan cat. Moreover, on the free surface of the lake and Stephen's green amid inverted reflections of trees, her uncommon dead spit, describing concentric circles of waterings, indicated by the constancy of its permanence the locus of the sunnulent prostrate fish, see of mouse watching cat. Again, in order to remember the date, combatants, issue and consequences of a famous military engagement she pulled a plate of her hair, see a fire to wash and cat. Furthermore, silly Millie, she dreamed of having had an unspoken unremembered conversation with the horse whose name had been Joseph to whom, which, she had offered the tumbler full of lemonade which he had appeared to have accepted, see a hearth dreaming cat. Hence, in passivity, in economy, in the instinct of tradition, and unexpectedness, their differences were similar. In what way had he utilized gifts, one, an owl, two, a clock, given his matrimonial auguries, to interest and to instruct her, as object lessons to explain, one, the nature and habits of oviparous animals, the possibility of aerial flight, certain abnormalities of vision, the secular process of embalsamation, two, the principle of the pendulum, exemplified in Bob, wheel gear and regulator, the translation in terms of human or social regulation of the various positions of clockwise movable indicators on an unmoving dial, the exactitude of the recurrence per hour of an instant in each hour when the longer and the shorter indicator were at the same angle of inclination, vitalized it, five and five elevenths minutes past each hour per hour in arithmetical progression. In what manners did she reciprocate? She remembered. On the 27th anniversary of his birth she presented to him a breakfast mustache a cup of imitation crown derby porcelain ware. She provided, a quarter day out there about if or when purchases had been made by him not for her she showed herself attentive to his necessities, anticipating his desires. She admired, 
a natural phenomenon having been explained by him to her she expressed the immediate desire to possess without gradual acquisition of fraction of the science, the moiety, the quarter, a thousandth part. What proposal did Bloom, Dambulus, father of Millie, Somnambulus, make to Stephen, not Tambulus? To pass in or repose the hours intervening between Thursday proper and Friday normal on an extemporized cubicle in the apartment immediately above the kitchen and immediately adjacent to the sleeping apartment of his host and hostess. What various advantages would or might have resulted from a prolongation of such an extemporization? For the guest, security of domicile and seclusion of study. For the host, rejuvenation of intelligence, vicarious satisfaction. For the hostess, disintegration of obsession, acquisition of correct Italian pronunciation. Why might these several provisional contingencies between a guest and a hostess not necessarily preclude or be precluded by a permanent eventuality of reconciliatory union between a schoolfellow and the Jew's daughter? Because the way to daughter led through mother, the way to mother through a daughter. To what inconsequent polysyllabic question of his host did the guest return a monosyllabic negative answer? If he had known the late Mrs. Emily Sonico, accidentally killed at Sydney Parade Railway Station, the 14th of October 1903. What in Chode Corollary's statement was consequently suppressed by the host. A statement explanatory of his absence on the occasion of the interment of Mrs. Mary Dedalus, Boren Goulding, the 26th of June 1903, vigil of the anniversary of the decease of Rudolph Bloom, Boren Virig. Was the proposal of asylum accepted? Promptly, inexplicably, with amicability, greatly it was declined. What exchange of money took place between host and guest? The former returned to the latter, without interest, a sum of money 1-7-0, 1 pound 7 shillings sterling, advanced by the latter to the former. What counter-proposals were alternately advanced, accepted, modified, declined, restated in other terms, were accepted, gratified? Reconfirmed. To inaugurate a prearranged course of Italian instruction, place the residence of the instructed. To inaugurate a course of vocal instruction, place the residence of the instructors. To inaugurate a series of static semi-static and peripatetic intellectual dialogues, places the residence of both speakers. If both speakers were resident in the same place, the ship hotel and tavern, 6 Lower Abbey Street, W. E. Connery, proprietors, the National Library of Ireland, 10 Kildare Street, the National Maternity Hospital, 29, 30 and 31 Hulls Street, a public garden, the vicinity of a place of worship, a conjunction of two or more public thoroughfares, the point of bisection of the right line drawn between the residences if both speakers were resident in different places. What rendered problematic for Bloom the realization of these mutually self-excluding propositions? The irreparability of the past, once at a performance of Albert Hengler's circus in the Rotunda, Rutland Square, Dublin, an intuitive part of colored clown and quest of paternity had penetrated from the ring to a place in the auditorium where Bloom, solitary, was seated and had publicly declared to an exhilarated audience that he, Bloom, was his, the clown's, papa. The imprevitability of the future. Once in the summer of 1898 he, Bloom, had marked a floor in two slash dash with three notches on the milled edge and tendered it in payment of an account due to and received by J.M.T. Davy, family grocers, one Charlemont Mall, Grand Canal, for circulation on the waters of civic finance, for possible, circuitous or direct, return. Was the clown Bloom's son? No. Had Bloom's coin returned? Never. Why would a recurrent frustration the more depress him? Because at the critical turning point of human existence he desired to amend many social conditions, the product of inequality and avarice and international animosity. He believed in that human life was infinitely perfectible, eliminating these conditions. There remain the generic conditions imposed by natural, as distinct from human law, as integral parts of the human whole, the necessity of destruction to procure elementary sustenance the painful character of the ultimate functions of separate existence, the agonies of birth and death, the monotonous menstruation of semen and, particularly, human females extending from the age of puberty to the menopause, 
inevitable accidents at sea, and mines and factories, certain very painful maladies and their resultant surgical operations, innate lunacy and congenital criminality, decimating epidemics, catastrophic cataclysms which make terror the basis of human mentality, seismic upheavals the epicenters of which are located in densely populated regions, the fact of vital growth, through convulsions of metamorphosis, from infancy through maturity to decay. Why did he desist from speculation? Because it was a task for a superior intelligence to substitute other more acceptable phenomena in the place of the less acceptable phenomena to be removed? Did Stephen participate in his dejection? He affirmed his significance as a conscious rational animal proceeding syllogistically from the known to the unknown and a conscious rational reagent between a micro and a macrocosm and ineluctably constructed upon the incertitude of the void. Was this affirmation apprehended by Bloom? Not verbally. Substantially. What comforted his misapprehension? That as a competent keel citizen he had proceeded energetically from the unknown to the known through the incertitude of the void. In what order of precedence, with what attendant ceremony was the exodus from the house of bondage to the wilderness of inhabitation effected? Lighted candle and stick borne by Bloom to add Kona hat on a splint borne by Stephen, with what emanation secreto and what commemorative psalm? The 113th, Modus Peregrinus, and exit Israel the Egypto, Domus Jacob de Populo Barbaro. What did each do at the door of egress? Bloom set the candlestick on the floor. Stephen put the hat on his head. For what creature was the door of egress a door of Ingus? For a cat. What spectacle confronted them when they, first the host, then the guest, emerged silently, doubly dark, from obscurity by a passage from the rear of the house into the penumbra of the garden? The heaven tray of stars hung with humid night blue fruit. With what meditations did Bloom accompany his demonstration to his companion of various constellations? Meditations of evolution increasingly the stir, of the moon invisible and incipient lunation, approaching Praji, of the infinite litigious scintillating uncondensed Milky Way, discernible by daylight by an observer placed at the lower end of a cylindrical vertical shaft 5,000 feet deep sunk from the surface towards the center of the Earth. Of Sirius Alpha and Canis Mar, Tin La Tires, fifty seven, comma zero 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 zero, comma zero 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 miles distant and in volume nine hundred times the dimension of our planet, of Arcturus, of the precession of equinoxes, of Orion with belt and six equal sun thing on nebula in which one hundred of our solar systems could be contained, of Marble and other nascent new stars such as Nova in nineteen oh one of our system plunging towards the constellation of Hercules, of the parallax on parallactic drift of so-called fixed stars, and reality ever moving wonders from immeasurably remote ends to infinitely remote features in comparison with which the years, three score and ten, of allotted human life formed a parenthesis of infinitesimal brevity. Were there adverse meditations of involution increasingly less vast, of the ends of geological periods recorded in the stratifications of the Earth, of the myriad minute entomological organic existences concealed in cavities of the earth, beneath the removable stones, and hives and mounds, of microbes, germs, bacteria, bacilli, spermatozoa, of the incalculable trillions of billions of millions of imperceptible molecules contained by cohesion of molecular affinity in a single pinhead, of the universe of human serum constellated with red and white bodies, themselves universes of void space constellated with other bodies, each and continuity, its universe of divisible component bodies of which each was again divisible and divisions of indivisible component bodies, dividends and divisors ever diminishing without actual division till, if the progress were carried far enough, not nowhere it was never reached. Why did he not elaborate these calculations to a more precise result? Because some years previously in 1886 when occupied with the problem of the quadrature of the circle he had learned that the existence of a number computed to a relative degree of accuracy to be of such magnitude in oh so many places, for example, the ninth power of the ninth power of nine, that, the result having been obtained, 33 closely printed volumes of 1,000 pages each of innumerable choirs and reams of India paper would have to be requisitioned in order to contain the complete tale of its printed integers of units, tens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, tens of millions, 
hundreds of millions, billions, the nucleus of the nebula of every digit of every series containing six cent with the potentiality of being raised by the utmost kinetic elaboration of any power of any of its powers. Did he find the problems of the inhabitability of the planets and their satellites by race, given in species, and of the possible social and moral redemption of said race by a redeemer, easier of solution? Of the different order of difficulty, conscious that the human organism, normally capable of sustaining an atmospheric pressure of 19 tons, when elevated to a considerable altitude in the terrestrial atmosphere suffered with arithmetic of intensity, according as the line of demarcation between troposphere and stratosphere was approximated from nasal hemorrhage, impeded respiration and vertigo, when proposing this problem for solution, he had conjectures as a working hypothesis which could not be proved impossible that a more adaptable and differently anatomically constructed race of beings might subsist otherwise under Martian, Mercurial, Veneral, Jovian, Saturnian, Neptunian or Uranian sufficient well in conditions, though in apogee humanity beings created in varying forms with finite differences resulting similar to the whole and to one another would probably there is here remain and alter land and alienably attached to vanities, the vanities of vanities and to all that is vanity. In the problem of possible redemption, the minor was proved by the major, which various features of the constellations were in turn considered. The various colors significant of various degrees of vitality, white, yellow, crimson, vermilion, cinnabar, their degrees of brilliancy, their magnitudes revealed up to and including the seventh, of positions, the Wagoner's star, Walsingham Way, the chariot of David, the annular signatures of Saturn, the condensation of spiral nebulae and the suns, the interdependent gyrations of double suns, the independent synchronous discoveries of Galileo, Simon Marius. Piazzi, Leverrier, Herschel, Gale, the systematizations attempted by Bode and Kepler of cubes at distances and squares at times of revolution, the almost infinite compressibility of hirsute comets and their vast elliptical aggressor entry orbits from perihelion to aphelion, the sidereal origin of meteoric stones, the Libyan floods on Mars about the period of the birth of the younger Astroscopus, the annual recurrence of meteoric showers about the period of the feast of Islawards, Martyr, Low August, the monthly recurrence known as the new moon with the old moon in her arms, the positive influence of celestial on human bodies, the appearance of a star, first magnitude of exceeding brilliancy dominating by night and day, a new luminous sun generated by the collision and amalgamation and incandescence of two nine luminous suns, about the period of the birth of William Shakespeare over Delta in the recumbent universe setting constellation of Cassiopeian and of a star, second magnitude of similar origin but of lesser brilliancy which had appeared in and disappeared from the constellation of the Corona Septentrio is about the period of the birth of Leopold Bloom and of other stars of, presumably, similar origin which had, effectively or presumably, appeared in and disappeared from the constellation of Andromeda about the period of the birth of Stephen Dedalus, and in and from the constellation of Oregon some years after the birth and death of Rudolph Bloom, Jr., and in and from other constellations some years before or after the birth or death of other persons, the attendant phenomena of eclipses, solar and lunar, from immersion to immersion. Abatement of wind, transit of shadow, taciturnity of winged creatures, emergence of nocturnal or crepuscular animals, persistence of infernal light, obscurity of terrestrial waters, pallor of human beings. His Bloom's logical conclusion, having weighed the matter and allowing for possible error, that it was not a heaven tray, not a heaven growth, not a heaven beast, not a heaven, that it was a utopia, there being the known method from the known to the unknown. An infinity renderable equally finite by the supposition of position of one or more bodies equally of the same and of different magnitudes, mobility of illusory forms immobilized in space, remobilized in air, a past which possibly had ceased to exist as a present before its probable spectators had entered actual present existence. Was he more convinced of the aesthetic value of the spectacle? Indubitably in consequence of the reiterated examples of poets in the delirium of the frenzy of attachment or in the basement of rejection invoking ardent sympathetic constellations or the frigidity of the satellite of their planet. Did he then accept as an article of belief the theory of astrological influences upon sublunary disasters? It seemed to him as possible a proof as a confutation in the nomenclature employed in its selenographical charts as attributable to verifiable intuitions to fallacious analogies. 
the lake of dreams, the sea of rains, the gulf of dews, the ocean of fecundity. What special affinities appeared to him to exist between the moon and woman? Her antiquity in preceding and surviving successive Tellurian generations, her nocturnal predominance, her satellitic dependence, her luminary reflection, her constancy under all her phases, rising and setting by her appointed times, waxing and waning, the forced invariability of her aspect, her indeterminate response to an affirmative interrogation, her potency over effluent and refluent waters, her power to enamor, to mortify, to invest with beauty, to render insane, to incite to an aid delinquency, the tranquil inscrutability of her visage, the terribility of her isolated dominant implacable resplendent propinquity, her omens of tempest and of calm, the stimulation of her light, her motion and her presence, the admonition of her creators, her air at seas, her silence, her splendor, when visible, her attraction, when invisible. What visible luminous sign attracted Bloom's, who attracted Stevens, gaze? In the second story of his, Bloom's house the light of a paraffin oil lamp with a bleak shade projected on a screen of roller blind supplied by Frank O'Hara, window blind, curtain pole and revolving shutter manufacturer, 16 Angier Street. How did he elucidate the mystery of an invisible attractive person, his wife Marion, Molly, Bloom, denoted by a visible splendid sign, a lamp? with indirect and direct verbal allusions or affirmations, with subdued affection and admiration, with description, with impediment, with suggestion. Both then were silent. Silent, each contemplating the other and both mirrors of the reciprocal flesh of their his and other's fellow offices. Were they indefinitely inactive? At Stephen's suggestion, at Bloom's instigation both, first Stephen, then Bloom, and Penumbra urinated, their sides contiguous, their organs of maturation reciprocally rendered invisible by manual circumposition, their gazes, first Bloom's, then Stevens, elevated to the projected luminous and similar in shadow. Similarly, the trajectories of their, first sequent, then simultaneous, urinations were dissimilar, Bloom's longer, less a ruin, in the incomplete form of the bifurcated penultimate alphabetical letter who in his ultimate year at high school, 1880, had been capable of attaining the point of greatest altitude against the whole concurrent strength of the institution, 210 scholars, Stevens Hire, more sibilant, who in the ultimate hours of the previous day had augmented by diuretic consumption and insistent vesicle pressure. What different problems presented themselves to each concerning the invisible audible collateral organ of the other? The bloom, the problems of irritability, Tumescence, rigidity, reactivity, dimension, sanitariness, velocity. To Stephen, the problem of the sacerdotal integrity of Jesus circumcised by January, holiday of obligation to hear Mass and abstain from unnecessary servile work, and the problem as to whether the divine prepuce, the carnal bridal ring of the Holy Roman Catholic Apostolic Church, conserved and called Calcutta were deserving of simple hyperdule or on the fourth degree of later accorded to the abscission of such divine excrescences as hair and toenails. What celestial sign was by both simultaneously observed? A star precipitated with great apparent velocity across the firmament from Vega and the lyre above the zenith beyond the star group of the trestle bare and ice towards the zodiacal sign of Leo. How did the centripetal remainder effort aggress to the centrifugal depurator? By inserting the barrel of an originated male key in the hole of an unstable female lock, obtaining a purchase on the bow of the key and turning its wards from right to left, withdrawing a bolt from its staple, pulling inward spasmodically an obsolescent unhinged door and revealing an aperture for free egress and free ingress. How did they take leave, one of the other, in separation? Standing perpendicular at the same door and on different sides of its base, the lines of their valedictory arms, meeting at any point and forming any angle less than the sum of two right angles. What sound accompanied the union of their tangent, the disunion of their respective lengths and trifugal and centripetal hands? The sound of the pill of the hour of the night by the chime of the bells in the church of St. George. What echoes of that sound were by both and each heard? By Stephen, Lilia Rudy Blandium. Terma circumdet. You by Lanium T. Virginum. Chorus Excipit By Bloom, Heyo, 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 Heyo. 
We were the several members of the company which with balloon that day at the bidding of that pill had traveled from Sandy Mount in the south to Glasnevin in the north. Martin Cunningham in bed, Jack Power in bed, Simon Dillis in bed, Ned Lambert in bed, Tom Kernan in bed, Joe Hines in bed, John Henry Minton in bed, Bernard Corgan in bed, Patsy Dignan in bed, Patty Dignan in the grave. Alone, what did Bloom hear? The double reverberation of retreating feet on the heaven and earth, the double vibration of a jizz harp in the resonant plane. Alone, what did Bloom feel? The cold of interstellar space, thousands of degrees below freezing point on the absolute zero of Fahrenheit, centigrade or rare muir, the incipient intimations of proximate dawn. Of what did Belcham and him touch and footstep and Lonica remind him? Of companions now in various manners and different places defunct, Percy Ap John, killed in action, Martyr River, Philip Gilligan, Thesis, Jervis Street Hospital, Matthew F. Kane, Accidental Drowning, Dublin Bay, Philip Moisel, Pyemia, Hatesbury Street, Michael Hart, Thesis, Mater Misericordia Hospital, Patrick Dignan, Apoplexy, Sandy Mount. What prospect of what phenomena inclined him to remain? The disparition of three final stars, the diffusion of daybreak the apparition of a new solar disk. Had he ever been a spectator of those phenomena? Once, in 1887, after protracted performance of charades in the house of Luke Doyle, Kimmich, he had awaited with patience the apparition of the diurnal phenomenon, seated on the wall, his gaze turned in the direction of Meisrich, the east. He remembered the initial paraphenomena, more active air, a matutinal distant cock, Ecclesiastical clocks at various points, of in music, the isolated tread of an early wayfarer, the visible diffusion of the light of an invisible luminous body, the first golden limb of the resurgent sun perceptible low on the horizon. Did he remain? With deep inspiration he returned, re-traversing the garden, re-entering the passage, re-closing the door. With brief suspiration he reassumed the candle, reascended the stairs re-approached the door of the front room, hall floor, and re-entered. What suddenly arrested his ingress? The right temporal lobe of the hollow sphere of his cranium came into contact with a solid timber angle where, an infinitesimal but sensible fraction of a second later, a painful sensation was located in consequence of antecedent sensations transmitted and registered. Describe the alterations affected in the disposition of the articles of furniture. The sofa upholstered and prune plush had been translocated from opposite the door to the Inglesite near the compactly furled Union Jack, an alteration which he had frequently intended to execute. The blue and white checker and late Majolique on top table had been placed opposite the door and the place vacated by the prune plush sofa. The walnut sedi board, a projecting angle of which had momentarily arrested his ingress, had been moved from its position beside the door to a more advantageous but more perilous position in front of the door. Two chairs had been moved from right and left of the Inglesite to the position originally occupied by the blue and white checker and late Majolique on top table. Describe them. 1. A squat stuff easy care, with stout arms extended and back slanted to the r, which, repelled in recoil, had then upturned in a regular fringe of a rectangular rug and now displayed on its amply upholstered seat a centralized diffusing and diminishing discoloration. The other, a slender splayful chair of glossy cane curves, placed directly opposite the former, its frame from top to seat and from seat to base being varnished dark brown his seat being a bright circle of white plate and rush. What significance is attached to these two chairs? Significances of similitude, of posture, of symbolism, of circumstantial evidence, of testimonial supermanence. What occupied the position originally occupied by the CD board? A vertical piano cabby with exposed keyboard, its closed coffin supporting a pair of long yellow ladies' gloves in an emerald ash ray containing four consumed matches, a partly consumed cigarette and two discolored ends of cigarettes, its music rest supporting the music in the key of G natural for voice and piano of Love's old sweet song, Words by G. Clifton Bingham, composed by J. L. Molloy, sung by Madame Wynette Sterling, open at the last page with the final indications ad libitum, forte, pedal, animato. Sustained pedal, retirando, close. 
With what sensations did Bloom contemplate and rotation these objects? With strain, elevating a candlestick, with pain, feeling on his right temple and contused the essence, with attention, focusing his gaze on a large dull passive and a slender bright active, with solicitation, bending and down turning the upturned drug fringe, with amusement, remembering Dr. Malachi Mulligan's scheme of color containing the gradation of green, with pleasure, repeating the words in antecedent act and perceiving through various channels of internal sensibility the consequent and concomitant tepid pleasant diffusion of gradual discoloration. His next proceeding. From an open box on the Majolica top table he extracted a black diminutive cone, one inch in height, placed it on its circular base on a small tin plate, placed his candlestick on the right corner of the mantelpiece, produced from his waistcoat a folded page of prospectus, illustrated, entitled Argent with New Time, unfolded the same, examined it superficially, rolled it into a thin cylinder, ignited it in the candle of flame, applied it and ignited to the apex of the cone till the latter reached the stage of rudiments, placed the cylinder in the basin of the candlestick disposing its unconsumed part in such a manner as to facilitate total combustion. What followed this operation? The truncated conical crater summit of the diminutive volcano emitted a vertical and serpentine fume redolent of aromatic or incense. What homothetic objects, other than the candlestick, stood on the mantelpiece? A timepiece of striated Connemara marble, stopped at the hour of 4.46 a.m. on the 21st of March 1896, matrimonial gift of Matthew Dillon. A dwarf tree of glacial arborescence under a transparent bell shade, matrimonial gift of Luke and Caroline Doyle, an embalmed owl, matrimonial gift of Alderman John Hooper. What interchanges of looks took place between these three objects in bloom? In the mirror of the gilt bordered pier glass, the undecorated back of the dwarf tree guarded the upright back of the embalmed owl. Before the mirror of the matrimonial gift of Alderman John Hooper with a clear melancholy wise bright motionless compassionate gaze regarded Bloom or Bloom with obscure tranquil profound motionless compassionate gaze regarded the matrimonial gift of Luke and Caroline. What composite asymmetrical image in the mirror then attracted his attention? The image of a solitary, hypsoidive, mutable, alioidive man. Why solitary, hypsoidive? Brothers and sisters had he none. Yet that man's father was his grandfather's son. Why mutable, Ali Arlative? From infancy to maturity he had resembled his maternal procreatrix. From maturity to senility he would increasingly resemble his paternal procreator. What final visual impression was communicated to him by the mayor? The optical reflection of several inverted volumes improperly arranged and not in the order of their common letters with scintillating titles on the two bookshelves opposite. Catalog these books. Tom's Dublin Post Office Directory, 1886. Dennis Florence M. Carthy's Poetical Works, Copper Beach Leaf Bookmark at P. 5. Shakespeare's Works, Dark Crimson Morocco, Gold Tool. The Useful Red Ericaner, Brown Cloth. The Secret History of the Court of Charles II, Red Cloth, Tool Binding. The Child's Guide, Blue Cloth. The Beauties of Killarney, Rappers. When We Were Boys by William O'Brien, MP, Green Cloth, Slightly Faded, Envelope Bookmark, P. 217. Thoughts from Spinoza, Maroon Leather. The Story of the Heavens by Sir Robert Ball, Blue Cloth. Ellis's Three Trips to Madagascar, Brown Cloth, Title Obliterated. The Stark Monroe Letters by A. Conan Doyle, Property of the City of Dublin Public Library, 106 Capel Street, Lunt the 21st of May, Whitson Eve, 1904, due the 4th of June 1904, 13 days overdue, Black Cloth Binding, Bearing White Letter Number Ticket. Voyages in China by Viator, recovered with brown paper, red ink title. Philosophy of the Talmud, some pamphlet. Lockhart's Life of Napoleon, cover wanting, marginal annotations, minimizing victories, aggrandizing defeats of the protagonist. Saul and Heaven by Gustav Freedom, blackboards, gothic characters, cigarette coupon bookmark at P. 24. Hosier's History of the Russo-Turkish War, Brown Cloth, of Volumes, with Gum Label, 
Garrison Library, Governor's Parade, Gibraltar, on verso of cover. Lawrence Bloomfield in Ireland by William Allingham, 2nd edition, green cloth, gilt trefoil design, previous owner's name and recto of flyleaf erased. A handbook of astronomy, cover, brown leather, detached, S plates, antique letterpress long primer, author's footnotes non pareil, marginal clues brevier, captions small pica. The Hidden Life of Christ, Blackboards In the track of the sun, yellow cloth, title page missing, recurrent title and testation. Physical Strength and How to Obtain It by Eugene Sando, Red Cloth Short but yet plain elements of geometry written in French by F. Ignat. Parties and rendered into English by John Harris D.D. London, printed for Art Clock at the Bipop's Head, MDCCXI with declaratory epistle to his worthy friend Charles Cox, of choir, member of Parliament for the Burg of South Wark and having in calligraphed statement on the flyleaf certifying that the book was the property of Michael Gallagher, dated this 10th day of May 1822 and requiring the person who should find it, if the book should be lost or go after a directory to Michael Gallagher, Carpenter, Duffery Gate, and if the County of Wakelow, the finest place in the world. What reflections occupied his mind during the process of reversion of the inverted volumes? The necessity of order, a place for everything and everything in its place, the deficient appreciation of literature possessed by females, the incongruity of an apple and canary than a tumbler and of an umbrella inclined in a close stool, the insecurity of hiding any secret document behind, beneath or between the pages of a book. Which volume was the largest in bulk? Hosier's History of the Russo-Turkish War What among other data did the second volume of the work in question contain? The name of a decisive battle, forgotten, frequently remembered by a decisive officer, Major Brian Cooper Tweedy, remembered. Why, firstly and secondly, did he not consult the work in question? Firstly, in order to exercise mnemotechnic, secondly, because after an interval of amnesia, when, seated at the central table, about to consult the work in question, he remembered by mnemotechnic the name of the military engagement, Plevna. What caused him consolation in his sitting posture? The candour, nudity, pose, tranquility, youth, grace, sex, counsel of a statue erect in the center of the table, an image of Narcissus purchased by auction from P.A. Wren, nine bachelors walk. What caused him irritation in his sitting posture? Inhibitory pressure of collar, size 17 and waistcoat, 5 buttons, 2 articles of clothing superfluous in the costume of mature males and inelastic to alterations of mass by expansion. How was the irritation allayed? He removed his collar, with contained black necktie and collapsible stud, from his neck to a position on the left of the table. He unbuttoned successively in reverse direction waistcoat, trousers shirt and vest along the medial line of irregular and crispated black hairs extending in triangular convergence from the pelvic basin over the circumference of the abdomen and umbilicular fossil along the medial line of nodes to the intersection of the sixth pectoral vertebrae, thence produced both ways at right angles and terminating in circles described about two equidistant points, right and left, on the summits of the mammary prominences. He unbraced successively each of six minus one braced trouser buttons, arranged in pairs, of which one incomplete. What involuntary actions followed? He compressed between two fingers the flesh circumjacent to a circuitous and a left infracostal region below the diaphragm resulting from the sting inflicted two weeks and three days previously, the 23rd of May 1904, by B. He scratched and precisely with his right hand, though insensible of fruition, Various points and surfaces of his partly exposed, wholly obluted skin. He inserted his left hand into the left lower pocket of his waistcoat and extracted and replaced a silver coin, a shilling, placed there, presumably, on the occasion, the 17th of October 1903, of the interment of Mrs. Emily Sonico, Sydney Parade. Compiled a budget for the 16th of June 1904.
debit one pork kidney one copy freeman's journal one bath and gratification tram fare one in memoriam patrick dignan two banbury cakes one lunch one renewal fee for book one pack of not paper and envelopes one dinner and gratification one postal order and stamp tram fare one pig's foot one cheap's trotter one cake fries plain chocolate one square soda bread one coffee and bun loan stephen Douglas refunded balance ls d 0-0-3 Zero dash zero dash one zero dash one dash six zero dash zero dash one zero dash five dash zero zero dash zero dash one zero dash zero dash seven zero dash one dash zero zero dash zero dash two zero dash two dash zero zero dash two dash eight zero dash zero dash one zero dash zero dash four zero dash zero dash three Zero dash zero dash one zero dash zero dash four zero dash zero dash four one dash seven dash zero zero dash seventeen dash five two dash nineteen dash three credit cash and hand commission receive Freeman's journal loan Stephen D. Ellis D zero dash four dash nine one dash seven dash six one dash seven dash zero two dash nineteen dash three did the process of divestiture continue? Sensible of a benignant persistent ache in his foot soles he extended his foot to one side and observed the creases, protuberances and salient points caused by foot pressure in the chorus of walking repeatedly in several different directions, then, inclined, he disnoted the lacha and knots, unhooked and loosened the laces, took off each of his two boots for the second time, detached the partially moistened right sock through the forepart of which the nail of his great toe had again affected, raised his right foot and, having unhooked a purple elastic sock suspender, took off his right sock, placed his unclothed right foot on the margin of the seat of his chair, picked it and gently lacerated the protruding part of the great toenail, raised the part lacerated to his nostrils and inhaled the odor of the quick, then, with satisfaction, threw away the lacerated unguil fragment. Why with satisfaction? Because the odor inhaled corresponded to other odors inhaled of other unguil fragments, picked and lacerated by Master Bloom, pupil of Mrs. Ellis's juvenile school, patiently each night in the act of brief genuflection and nocturnal prayer and ambitious meditation. And what ultimate ambition did all concurrent and consecutive ambitions now coalesce? Not to inherit by right of primogeniture, Gavilka under Borough English or possess in perpetuity an extensive domain of a sufficient number of acres, roots and perches, statute land measure, valuation 42 pounds, a grazing turbary surrounding a baronial hall with gate lodge and carriage drive nor, on the other hand, a terrace house or some mid-attached villa, described as roots in herbal quincy sauna, but a purchase by private treaty and fee simple a thatched bungalow shape two-story dwelling house of southerly aspect, surmounted by vein and lightning conductor, connected with the earth, with porch covered by parasitic plants, ivy or Virginia creeper, hall door, olive green, with smart carriage finish and neat door dresses, stucco front with gilt tracer at ease and gable, rising, if possible, upon a gentle eminence with agreeable prospect from balcony with stone pillar parapet over unoccupied and unoccupiable interjacent pastures and standing in five or six acres of its own ground, at such a distance from the nearest public thoroughfares to render its house lights visible at night above and through a quickset hornbeam hedge of topiary cutting, situated at a given point not less than one statute mile from the periphery of the metropolis, within a time limit of not more than 15 minutes from tram or train line, for example, Dundrum, South, or Sutton, Naworth, both localities equally reported by trial to resemble the terrestrial poles and being favorable climates for physical subjects. The premises to be held under fee farm granite, least 999 years, the mess wage to consist of one drawing room of bay window, two lancets, thermometer affixed, one sitting room, four bedrooms, two servants' rooms, tiled kitchen with close range in the scullery, lounge hall fitted with linen wild presses, fumed oak sectional bookcase containing the Encyclopedia Britannica and New Century Dictionary, transverse obsolete medieval and oriental weapons. Dinner gong, alabaster lamp, bowl pendant, vulcanite automatic telephone receiver with adjacent directory, hint up to that minster carpet with cream ground and trellis border, loot table with pillar and claw legs, 
hearth with massive fire brasses and ormal a mantle chronometer clock, guaranteed timekeeper with cathedral chime, barometer with hydrographic chart, comfortable land settees and corner fitments, upholstered and ruby plush with good springing and sunk center, three banner Japanese screen and cuss spiders, club style, rich winter colored leather, gloss renewable with a minimum of labor by use of linseed oil and vinegar and pyramidally prismatic central chandelier luster, bentwood perch with finger day and parrot, expurgated language, embossed mural paper at 10 slash dash per dozen with transverse swags of carmen floral design and top crown frieze, staircase, three continuous flights at successive right angles, a varnished clear gray oak, treads and risers, newel, balusters and handrail, with step head up panel dado, Dressed with camphorated wax, bathroom, hot and cold supply, reclining and shower, water closet on mezzanine provided with an opaque single air pan oblong window, tip hump seat, bracket lamp, brass tiara and brace, armrests, footstool and artistic oleograph on interface of door, ditto, plain, servants' apartments with separate sanitary and hygienic necessaries for cook, general and between maid, salary. Rising by biennial unearned increments of two pounds, with comprehensive fidelity insurance, annual bonus one pound, and retire in allowance based on the 65 system. After 30 years service, pantry, buttery, larder, refrigerator, old toffices, coal and wood slabs with wine have been still and sparkling vintages for distinguished guests. If entertained to dinner, evening dress, carbon monoxide gas supply throughout. What additional attractions might the grounds contain? As a data, a tennis and fives colored, a shrubbery, a glass summer house with tropical palms, equipped in the best botanical manner, a rockery with water spray, a beehive arranged on humane principles, oval flower beds and rectangular grass plot set with eccentric ellipses of scarlet and chrome tulips, blue sillas, crocuses, polyanthus, sweet william, sweet pea. Lily of the Valley bulbs obtainable from Sir James W. Mackey Limited Wholesale and Retail Seed and Bulb Merchants and their semen Agents for Chemical Manures, 23 Sackville Street, Upper, an Orchard, Kitchen Garden and Vinery protected against illegal trespassers by glass top mural enclosures, a lumber shed with padlock for various inventory and implements. As E.L. Traps, Lobster Pots, Fashem Groves, Patchet, Steel yard, grindstone, cloud crusher, swath inner, care jazak, telescope ladder, tin tooth rake, washing clogs, hay deader, tumbling rake, bill hook, paint pot, brush, hole, and so on. What improvements might be subsequently introduced? A rabbitry and fowl run, a doby cot, a botanical conservatory, two hammocks, ladies and gentlemen, a sundial shaded and sheltered by laburnum or lilac trees. An exotically harmonically accorded Japanese tinkle gate bell affixed to left lateral gate post, a capacious water bit, a lawnmower with side delivery and grass box, a lawn sprinkler with hydraulic hose. What facilities of transit were desirable? When set about frequent connection by train or tram from their respective intermediate station or terminal. When countrybound velocipedes, a chainless freewheel roadster cycle with side basket gear attached. Or draft conveyance, a donkey with wicker trap or smart fit and with good working solid angular cob drawn gelding, 14H. What might be the name of this reachable or erected residence? Bloom Cottage, St. Leopold's, Floorville, Bloom of Seven Eccles Street for C. Bloom of Floorville, and loose owl garments with hair's tweed cap, price 8 sixths, and useful garden boots with elastic besits and water inkin. Planting a line of young fir trees, souring, pruning, staking, sowing hayseed, trundling a weed laden wheelbarrow without excessive fatigue at sunset amid the scent of new mown hay, ameliorating the soil, multiplying wisdom, achieving longevity. What syllabus of intellectual pursuits was simultaneously possible? Snapshot photography, comparative study of religions, folklore relative to various amatory and superstitious practices. Contemplation of the celestial constellations. What lighter recreations? Outdoor, garden and field work, cycling on level macadamus causeways, ascents of moderately high hills, 
meditation in secluded fresh water and unmolested river boating in secure where your like curricle with kid janker on reaches free from wares and rapids period of estivation the spurtinal of perambulation or equestrian circumprocession with inspection of stair landscape and contrastingly agreeable cottagers fires of smoke and peep terrors period of hibernation and our discussion and tepid security of unsolved historical and criminal problems Lecture of an expurgated exotic erotic masterpieces, house carpentry with tool box containing hammer, on nails, screws, tin tacks, gimlet, tweezers, bullnose plane and turn screw. Might he become a gentleman farmer of field produce and livestock? Not impossibly, with one or two stripper cows, one pocket upland hay and requisite farming implements, for example, an end to insurance. A turnip pulp, etc. What would be his civic functions and social status among the county families and landed gentry? Arranged successively in ascending powers of hierarchical order, that of gardener, groundsman, cultivator, breeder, and at the zenith of his career, resident magistrate or justice of the peace with the family crest and coat of arms and appropriate classical motto, Semper Paratus, duly recorded in the court directory, Bloom, Leopold P., MP, PC, KP. LLD, Honoris Causa, Bloomville, Dundrum, and mention the court and fashionable intelligence. Mr. and Mrs. Leopold Bloom have left Kingstown for England. What course of action did he outline for himself in such capacity? A course that lay between undue clemency and excess of rigor, the dispensation in a heterogeneous society of arbitrary classes, incessantly rearranged in terms of greater and lesser social inequality, of unbiased homogeneous and disputable justice tempered with mitigants of the widest possible latitude but exactable to the uttermost farthing with confiscation of estate, real and personal, to the crown. Law to the highest constituted power in the land, actuated by an innate love of rectitude his aims would be the strict maintenance of public order, the repression of many abuses though not of all simultaneously every measure and reform or retrenchment being a preliminary solution to be contained by fluxion and the final solution. The upholding of the letter of the law, common, statute and law merchant, against all traversers and coven and trespassers acting in contravention of bylaws and regulations, all resuscitators, by trespass and petty larceny of kindlings, of venable rights, obsolete by this way to, all our redundant instigators of international persecution, all the perpetuators of international animosities, all menial molesters of domestic conviviality, all recalcitrant violators of domestic conviviality prove that he had loved rectitude from his earliest youth. To master Percy Ap John at high school in 1880 he had developed his disbelief in the tenets of the Irish Protestant Church, to which his father Rudolph Beer, later Rudolph Bloom, had been converted from the Israelitic faith and communion in 1865 by the Society for Promoting Christianity Among the Jews, subsequently abjured by him in favor of Roman Catholicism at the epoch of and with a view to his matrimony in 1888. To Daniel Magrain and Francis Wade in 1882 during a juvenile friendship, terminated by the premature immigration of the former, he had advocated during nocturnal perambulations the political theory of colonial, for example. Canadian expansion and the evolutionary theories of Charles Darwin, expounded in The Descent of Man and the Origin of Species. In 1885 he had publicly expressed his adherence to the collective and national economic program advocated by James Fenton Lallor. John Fisher Murray, John Mitchell, J. F. X. O'Brien and others, the agrarian policy of Michael DeVitt, the constitutional agitation of Charles Stuart Parnell, MP for Cork City, the program of peace, retrenchment and reform of William Ewart Gladstone, MP for Midlothian, N.B., and, in support of his political convictions, had climbed up into a secure position amid the ramifications of a tree on Northumberland Road to see the entrance, the 2nd of February 1888, into the capital of a demonstrative torchlight procession of 20,000 torchbearers, divided into 120 trade corporations, bearing 2,000 torches and escort of the Marquis of Ripon and Honest John Morley. How much and how did he propose to pay for this country residence? As per prospectus of the industrious foreign acclimatized nationalized friendly state building society incorporated 1874, a maximum of 60 pounds per annum, being one-sixth of an assured income, derived from gilt-edged securities, 
representing a 5% simple interest on capital of £1,200. Estimate a price of 20 years purchase, of which to be paid on acquisition and the balance in the form of annual rent, via £800 plus plus two and one half percent interest on the same, repayable quarterly and equal annual installments until extinction by amortization of loan advanced for purchase within a period of 20 years, amounting to an annual rental of £64. Hedron included, the title needs to remain in possession of the lender or lenders with a saving clause envisaging forced sale, foreclosure and mutual compensation in the event of protracted failure to pay the terms assigned. Otherwise the mess wage to become the absolute property of the tenant occupier upon expiry of the period of years stipulated.